A lot of people think the devil looks like this, but he actually doesn't. The devil looks like a lot of things that you haven't yet realized. And during this Bible study, we are going to be exposing the devil. We're gonna be canceling the canceler. We're gonna be putting a reverse Uno card on this guy right here. He doesn't look like this. I'm showing you guys this photo. A lot of people recognize the devil like this, but today, during this Bible study, we're gonna be exposing the devil. It's gonna be actually a lot of fun. This isn't gonna be a scary Bible study. This isn't gonna be like a super crazy, like, I don't know, like rules or laws or anything like that. We're gonna to get to know God more. We're gonna to get to know Jesus Christ more. And we're actually gonna to get to know more of the schemes that the devil is using in today's culture, in Generation Z, in social media, the internet, and all the different schemes that he's using to enter into your life. I'm so excited you're here. So go grab a Bible, go grab a sibling. We're back with the Sunday Night Bible Study. It is gonna be a shorter video. We'll try to keep it right around 20 to 25 minutes. We're just gonna expose the devil tonight and we're gonna give glory to Jesus Christ, amen? All right, go grab your Bibles. I'm gonna start us out in prayer and then we're gonna get going. Father God, we just pray for this video. Lord God, I pray for everybody that's watching. Lord God, I pray for everybody that's tuning in. I pray that you would speak to us, Jesus. We are thirsty for you. Lord, we wanna know your way. God, we wanna know what you are saying to us. Let this YouTube video not be my ideas, God. Let it not be what's in my head, God. Let it be your thoughts. Let it be your words, God. We wanna crush the devil every single day. We want to expand the kingdom of light. God, we wanna crush the kingdom of darkness because Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. So I pray you would speak to every single person that's watching this video. In your mighty name I pray, amen and amen. Amen, woo, praise God. So excited you guys are here tonight. It's gonna to be so much fun. I hope you guys can hear me well um, as well. So basically tonight, we're gonna to be talking about some schemes that the devil uses. And the first scripture that I wanna to talk to you guys about, and if you wanna turn there with me, you can. The Bible says in, uh, give me one second while I pull it up here. The Bible says in John chapter eight and verse 44, Jesus was talking to these people called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You could call them the Hollywood list. You could call them the top of the top, the people that were the cancelers in that day. You see the devil does not have a pitchfork in his hands and like horns on his head. The devil masquerades himself as an angel of light. The Bible says that in Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. You don't have to turn there, but I can just read it to you. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, it says, for no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And so here's what you got to understand about the devil. The devil isn't going to knock on your door with a pitchfork in his hands and just say that he's just going to do all these things to your life. The devil uses culture. The devil uses social media. The devil uses people. The devil uses websites and all these crazy things to reach you in your life. But the good news is... We have Jesus Christ, amen? Okay, now turn with me, where did I say? Oh yeah, John chapter eight. So basically Jesus was vibing with all these disciples and then there was also these Pharisees and Sadducees who were hashtag fake and these Pharisees and Sadducees were near him and then this is what happened next. So turn with me to John chapter eight and we're gonna be looking at verse 44. And by the way, guys, I'll turn around the camera too as well and I'm gonna plug in the microphone now as well. So give me one second while I show you guys this scripture. And John, John, uh, let's see here. John chapter, and we're going to be looking at verse 44. Jesus was vibing with all these disciples. And we're just going to start reading in verse 34. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you what I have seen in my father's presence and you do that which you have heard from your father. And then verse 39, they answered, Abraham is our father. Then Jesus said, if you were Abraham's children, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things your own father does. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Okay, now guys, I have a question for you. And by the way, I hope the microphone is working because I just plugged it in. Sometimes it doesn't work as, as much as I like it. Thank you to Sia for that gift to this Bible study. Here's a crazy thing that most people don't realize about what the devil has done. has done. When Jesus was alive, get this, the devil, when Jesus was alive, literally was the same spirit that was canceling Jesus himself. Jesus was doing all these amazing works. He was doing miracles. He was saving souls. He was doing all these amazing things. And then the devil said, let's kill him. What you need to understand, the devil still works the same way today. And then let's keep reading though. 
read with me. By the way, guys, at the end of this video, we will pray together. And I actually believe that God is gonna speak to you. And you may not be caught up in cancel culture itself, but I guarantee you that the devil is using this, today's culture, that I guarantee you the devil is using some type of social media, some type of video, some type of app to reach you in your life, to make you judge other people, to make you try to cancel others, maybe at your school and your friends and your family. You don't wanna do that because as soon as you get caught up in this generation of cancel culture, as soon as you join the team, without even realizing it, the devil has now gotten a door into your life. And so the, the reason I believe God wants us to do this Bible study tonight is not because we just want to address modern issues. It's not just because we want a trending video. The reason why we're all doing this tonight is because we want to shut the door to the devil. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you. I'm not trying to have no devil up in my life. Also, I'm trying to give the devil that reverse card. When the devil comes up to you and accuses you, when the devil comes up to you and says you need to do all these things and that you need to cancel all these different people, it's time we respond and we say, devil, you can't get that on us. Devil, you can't do that to us. We got the reverse card. The reverse card is is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Period. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Let's keep reading though. In John chapter 8, and we're going to be looking at verse 42. So basically, now have you ever heard those people that said, well, I don't really believe in Jesus, but I believe in God, and so I'm saved, so I'm going to be great. Like, I don't really believe in Jesus, but I just have God. Have you ever heard those people? This is what Jesus said to them. The cancel culture today will say, well, Jesus is cool, but he's not really the way, the truth, and the life. The cancel culture today will actually cancel Jesus just like they did 2,000 years ago. They'll say Jesus was homophobic. They'll say Jesus was transphobic. They'll say Jesus was all these different things, and they'll cancel him today just like they did 2,000 years ago. But keep listening. In John chapter 8 and verse 42, Jesus said to them, and read with me if you guys can. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and now I am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. And then in verse 43, Jesus said, Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. There is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. He is a liar and the father of lies. The devil is the liar. Now, a lot of people will say cancel culture tells the truth. Cancel culture exposes things and it exposes people. But now I want you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And while you're turning there, I want to show you guys again, the devil wants to masquerade himself as someone who carries a pitchfork in his hands, as someone who looks really scared scary and really dark. The devil is using today's culture. The devil is using songs like WAP, lustful songs. The most popular songs in the whole world are often on the devil's playlist. And the reason why he's doing this is to reach you in your life without even you realizing it. But when you realize what he's doing, you can pull that reverse Uno card and change up everything, right? All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Praise God. And we'll pray in 10 minutes, guys. I'm really going to try to stick to that. In 10 minutes, we're going to all pray together. So stick around on this video until the end so that we can pray together because we want to close the door to the devil. Amen? Ain't nobody trying to get, ain't nobody got time for the devil to be in their lives. I don't know about you. I don't have time for the devil to be in my life, right? <laughs> Amen. So, all right, what have we learned so far? We learned that one, that these people that tried to kill Jesus, they were the first cancel culture people and they were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And guess what? It actually worked. They did. Well, it worked for three days. Hey! <laughs> Jesus pulled that Uno reverse card. No, God the Father pulled the Uno reverse card when Jesus was in hell. After three days, God said, psych. God said, yeet. Devil thought he had Jesus dead. And then God said, psych. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I just think that's hilarious. The devil really thought he won. The devil was like wiping off his hands. He's like, all right, look, everybody. We just beat Jesus Christ, the son of God, quote, unquote. We got him in hell. We got him dead, everybody. We got him out. There's no more hope for the world. There's no more hope for this Christianity stuff. And then God said, psych, you thought. <laughs> God said, psych. <laughs> I just love that. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're talking today about why you should not join cancel culture. Cancel culture nowadays will cancel everything. They'll cancel Swiss Debbie Cape Rolls. They'll cancel Aunt Jemima syrup. They'll cancel you. They'll cancel me. In fact, I've already been quote unquote canceled by a lot of different people. It's a toxic thing, but it's not toxic just because we want to say the word toxic. It's toxic because the devil is the CEO. Here's the thing though. A lot of us are saying, and now the only person we're going to cancel is the devil. Amen. But I want you to realize that at the end of this video, the devil is not the only one who has been doing this on the earth. It's tons of us. Even you yourself, my, me, myself, I've made mistakes in this. I recently was actually in California, Los Angeles, and San Diego, and I had actually some friends that came to Christ, and they actually used to be in a lot of um, some worldly situations with YouTubers and Viners and TikTokers, and they used to be in that way. They've given their life to Christ, and they're out of it now. 
but they were telling me about all these things that were happening, all these crazy things that you would never believe. And some, and also some places in which um, some bad things that had happened and, and, and some feelings that were hurt and people that were doing wrong to others. And while I was talking with them, I was reminded in my heart that when people don't know who Jesus Christ is, when Jesus is not Lord, they are not in control of their life. You see, the devil would have you to believe that if you don't serve God, you can just serve yourself, that you can go get a job, you can go to the place, you can accomplish your dreams. You don't have to serve God, you can just serve yourself. That's what the devil wants you to think. And that's what the devil has convinced billions of people. Here's the thing though, pay attention. Here's what has happened, are you ready? What has happened is that area is called the fence. Now I want you to say this after me, say these words, the fence. Good, one more time, out loud. Now some of you aren't saying these words, you gotta repeat this after me, say this out loud, the fence. So what the devil has is he's gotten all these people in the fence. He's gotten all these people in the gray area. He's gotten all these people in the middle. Now, they don't necessarily serve Satan. They haven't necessarily sold their soul to the devil, but neither have they given their life to God. Neither have they given their life to Jesus Christ. They're just kind of in the middle. You could say they're just vibing in the middle. And if you were to ask them if they love God, if they believe in God, maybe they would say they believe in God. But if they really have put their faith in Jesus Christ, they would say they're not living for Jesus. Okay, those are that people. Here's the thing. They are not in control of their life. You want to know who their Lord is? The devil. There once was a man who, when he went to bed, he had a dream. And he had this dream where there was a fence. There was two sides. There was a God side and the devil side. And he was sitting on the fence. And the time came where everyone was rounded up and they went to their master. And he thought that he, he wouldn't get hurt until God and, and everyone had left. But then the devil walked up to him and he was sitting on the fence in his dream. And the devil walked up to him and the devil said, you are mine, come with me. And the man responded back to the devil and he said, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm sitting on the fence. I don't wanna go with you. And the devil said, you don't understand. The fence is mine. And then that man woke up. I heard that story through a man named Todd White, who's really trustable. And, the, and then that man woke up. And as soon as he woke up, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. You see, he, had, he was an atheist. He had thought, well, he didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in the devil. He was neither. He was neither. And so he had thought for the longest amount of time that he would never get hurt, that nothing bad would ever happen until he realized that the fence was the devil's. Here's what happens in our life. Christians, non-Christians, we are living our life and then we look at someone else and we start realizing someone else's wrongs. And then our friend starts talking about another friend's wrongs and we start gossiping and we start talking about all the wrongs that someone else has done. Have you ever done that? Now, if you're watching this video and you're honest with yourself, you'll be like, yes, Gabe, I've done that. You'll put up two hands and two feet and you'll realize that you've done that. We've all made that mistake before. Here's the thing that you've got to realize. If you have judged someone else, if you have gossiped about someone else, if you have been a part of cancel culture before, listen very carefully to me when I say this. It's time to love. It's time to be like God and not like the devil. Listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Can I tell you something? Jesus, Jesus was canceled 2,000 years ago. But not only was he canceled by the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Jesus paid the price of our sin. Jesus paid the price of our mistakes. You know who deserved to die on the cross? You did, me did, I did, we all did. <laughs> but yet he did it for us. That is love. Love, Jesus didn't come down to this earth. He totally could have. Jesus was perfect. My homie, Je our homie Jesus, he was vibing. He was great. He had never done any wrong, amen, right? He had never done any wrong. But when he came down to this earth, he was canceled. Get this though, Jesus could have been like, y'all, I'm great, I'm doing great. I don't need you guys. I don't have any need for y'all. Uh, honestly, if y'all could just get away from me, that's what honestly Jesus could have done. He's like, I'm on another level. I've never sinned. God, why did you even send me down here? Jesus came down from the throne. But instead of doing that, he said, I will be just like them. Instead of doing that, he said, I will take their sin. I will take their mistakes. I will pay their, their sin and their, their price on my behalf. So listen to this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to be looking at verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Actually, no, we're going to be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we'll start out in verse, verse 17. Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says this, and I'll turn the camera for you guys too. Give me one second. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 reads this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to him, not counting men's sins against them. Now everyone just repeat this scripture after me. Not counting men's sins against them. One more time, I want you to say that scripture with me. Not counting men's sins against them. 
Now turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. This will be our final verse before we all pray together. Matthew chapter 7, check this verse out. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1. Jesus said, (laughs) Jesus said, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And then in verse 3, Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Verse 4, How can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your own eye, when all the time there is a plank in your eye? Verse 5, You hypocrite! First take the plank out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now what's crazy about this verse is Jesus is exposing all of us. Now, the most important thing is that you don't watch this video and say to yourself, well, good thing I'm not in cancel culture. Good thing I'm not like the devil. Phew, good thing the devil doesn't have anything on me because I've never done anything wrong because I'm great, I'm vibing, Gabe. Gabe, this video was good. You really exposed the devil, Gabe. Gabe, you really exposed other people. No, you can't say that. The only person you need to to look at after this video is yourself. Find out maybe steps that you've done wrong. Find out ways and areas of your life that you've judged other people. Here's the thing, I'm gonna be the first person to say that I've made mistakes in this very area. I've been scrolling through my TikTok for you page. I've been watching YouTube videos. I have friends of mine. I have family members of mine. I have acquaintances, even just strangers that I've looked at and I've criticized them. And I hate to say that, but it's the truth. I have made mistakes. I've judged other people. I've looked at other TikToks about God and I've said, wow, they're doing it for this. They're out for this. They've done this wrong. They've they've made all these mistakes. And I. I've said all those different things, but you know what? I really, really strongly believe that God wants to keep us safe. Here's the thing, when you start judging other people, when you start criticizing other people, it comes back around. And the more and more we cancel other people, the more and more we cancel all these brands and businesses, the more and more every single day we wake up like a Karen trying to eliminate people, We are being like the devil. The devil is the one who invented cancel culture. The devil is the one who's going out criticizing. And the devil is one that's in your head making you feel guilty and ashamed. This video is not to make you feel guilty or ashamed. This video isn't to say you're a mistake, that you're horrible, and that you need to repent or else you're going to hell. That's not what this video is about. This video is so that you could be safe from the devil. If your house was on fire and I was walking past, imagine that. If your house was on fire, you were sitting in your room, you were vibing. Let's say you were playing Roblox, okay? (laughs) How many of us play Roblox? Comment in the chat if you play Roblox. I don't know if you do, but let's say you're playing Roblox. You weren't paying any attention. You know how you, when you could be playing Roblox, you don't even know what's happening around you. (laughs) You're playing Roblox or you're watching, I don't know, you're watching video games, doing something and your house is on fire and I am your neighbor and I'm walking past the street. Let's say I'm on a skateboard. I'm skating and I see your house on fire. If I saw your house on fire, but I didn't say anything. I just let you stay in your room. I saw you in your room, but I said, well, I don't want to offend them. I don't want to I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna tell them that their house is on fire because I don't wanna, I don't wanna make them aware of that. That's not, that I just, I, I don't wanna, I don't really, that's not my part, I'm just their neighbor, so. So if their house is on fire, that's, that's just their responsibility. That would not be love, would it? No, love would be to be honest with them and say, bro, your house is on fire. Love would be, get out of the house, come to the street. And if you received that love, you would make a change. If you received that love, you would what? Run from the fire, right? Everybody has common sense. Everybody, if they had common sense, they would be like, oh, I should run away from this fire. Here's what the devil is doing right now. He has a house called cancel culture. He has a house called modern culture. And in his house, there is really bad music. The songs WAP, these lustful songs, these dark songs where they talk about drugs and sex and money and girls. And he has all these different things. Guys, and I'm telling you this, I was just in California talking to friends of mine who used to be in the world. They used to be in part of the groups of the biggest YouTubers you know. They used to be doing all these crazy things. And they told me, they told me, they said, they said, Gabe, when I was doing that stuff, I literally sensed the presence of the devil. I literally knew that the devil was using the, these groups to reach the world. Here's the thing though. It's time as Christians, we run away from the devil's devices. It's time as Christians, we start to love. It's time as Christians, we bring on the Holy Spirit fire, which is so much better than the fire of the devil, trust me. And so as we close out this Bible study, as we pray together, the main thing that we need to, we need to bring away from all of this is to remember, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to the patterns of this world. And it, just because the world is doing something, just because cancel culture is saying something, that doesn't mean we have to follow it. Instead, we follow Jesus Christ. And I don't know what lies the devil has been putting in your head. Anything that makes you ashamed or makes someone else ashamed, anything that makes you feel condemned or someone else condemned is not from God, it's from the enemy. 
And the only WAP we're doing here is worship and praise. Amen. <laughs> The only, the only Lord we have is Jesus Christ. And the only person we're canceling is the devil. Amen. Also, as we pray together, I believe that if you struggle with anyone, if you have a relationship, a family member, a friend, if you have anybody that you struggle with in your life, I really truly believe this. It's time you, you love them. Believe the best of them. Remember how I showed you that scripture about the Pharisees? And also, Remember how the Pharisees canceled Jesus. They counted his wrongs. He didn't have any wrongs, but they made up wrongs against him. But then God says, God does not count our sins against us because of what Jesus did. Do you know what that means? Because of what Jesus did, it's time for you to stop counting other people's wrongs done to you. So if you are holding unforgiveness, if you are judging other people, if you are gossiping, if you're talking bad about anyone, I'll be the first to be the, I'll raise my two hands and say, I've made those mistakes. Recently, like this past week, I made the mistake. I did. And I'm gonna repent with you guys. But when we repent, it's a good thing because God forgives us, he washes us, and we can walk free from the devil's devices. Amen? So as we pray together, I really mean that. Any unforgiveness, any bitterness, any gossip that you're holding against any person, maybe your parents, friends, family members, whoever it is, forgive them and believe the best of them. They are not your problem, the devil is. If you have struggled with a friendship, a teacher, if you have a Karen, Karens aren't the problem. Can I just be honest with you? It's the Karen spirit that the devil works in them. I'm being serious. They're not the problem. Don't get mad at them. Cancel the devil. Amen? Let's pray together. Close your eyes with me if you like. <laughs> and everybody watching, just say these words after me. Father, I repent. I recognize my mistakes. I repent for judging others. I repent for criticizing others, thinking that I was something better. I repent for being prideful. Help me to love. Help me to forgive. Help me to believe the best that no matter what happens, I will love just like you love Jesus. <laughs> Satan, take your hands off my life. Take your hands off my family. I have chosen to forgive. I will not gossip. I will not judge others. I judge myself. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Even when I don't deserve it. Even when I didn't earn it even when I didn't do anything to get your love, Jesus, you still freely gave it. <laughs> Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I receive the Holy Spirit and fire now. In Jesus' mighty name, I will love my friends. I will love my family. And God, anywhere else, any other place, the devil has an open door in my life. Show it to me. Show me the changes I need to make so that I can walk free. Thank you for setting me free. <laughs> Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise God, everybody. Woo!
<laughs> canceling the devil. We canceling the devil's doors in our life. We pulling that reverse card. We pulling that reverse Uno card on the devil, amen? Guys, before you go, I just wanna say thanks so much for watching this video. I think we're gonna make some new merch and we're gonna say hashtag cancel the devil because the devil is the one who started this cancel culture baloney, balagna, balagna. That's really what it is. And now it's time we cancel him, amen? <laughs> now the way to cancel the devil is spread the gospel. The way to cancel the devil is love other people. The way to cancel the devil is forgive other people. Don't cancel other people, cancel the devil. Don't cancel companies or brands. That ain't your job. That ain't your job, honey boo boo. <laughs> your job, honey boo boo, is to love Jesus Christ and to love others. Now, if you have a brother or sister that is making a mistake and God puts it on your heart and you're a pastor or you're someone they look up to or someone they honor, then say something to them because you don't want them to burn in a fire, right? So you want to be honest with them. That being said, you don't go publicly putting a Facebook post or putting on Instagram or making a TikTok about somebody. That never helps them. I've been on the other side of those TikToks. I've been on the other side of the six part series where people talk about all the wrongs I've done. It never changed me. And they were wrong too, but anyways. I just wanna say thanks guys for watching. If this is your first time, you can hit the subscribe button. We're live Sunday nights, Friday night, Sunday, Friday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. I apologize, we didn't do a Zoom this past Friday, but this coming Zoom, this coming Friday night, we will do a Kahoot and a Zoom. So you don't wanna miss it. Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, invite a friend. So we're definitely gonna do the Zoom and we're gonna try our best to do the Kahoot as well. So invite a friend, Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. If you guys are interested in some Make Jesus Viral merch, you can do so um, down in the description below. There's also, if you scroll down on this video, you'll see the merch as well. Keep spreading the gospel, keep canceling the devil. Finally, I just wanna give you a quick tip. If you struggle at all with your relationship with God, you're maybe saying to yourself, Gabe, where do I read in the Bible? Start out in John chapter one and read one page. It will really help. Also on the channel, there's some videos on how to read the Bible. So if you wanna learn how to pray in tongues, how to hear God's voice, anything like that, click those videos down below. There's a playlist where you can learn so much about God. This channel is your place to know God, especially as a young person. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Share the channel to your friends if you'd like. You don't have to. Keep spreading the gospel. Jesus is king. Hashtag make Jesus viral. Jesus is Lord. I'll see you guys next time. We'll put out a couple uploads this week as well on Wednesday um, from the California trip. Me and Big Nick made some videos together. You're gonna wanna see them. So look out Wednesday at around 3 p.m. for those videos, okay? I love you guys. Have a great night tonight. Jesus is king. Amen. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Oh, I forgot one thing. Shout out to Almira, Victoria, Genesis Walker, Aaron, Candice, and so many more for moderating the chat.